Good morning and welcome to part number five and the final part of the VM309 amplifier rebuild. Anyways, I was searching over this amplifier all over where I could put the, uh, the fuse holder. And I thought of maybe putting it on one of these 440 studs here that hold the terminal strips in and mount it on the rear apron like I was going to do. Um, but that would mean I'd have to cut in to the wiring, the, 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 the line cord, and it's very, very difficult to get in there. It would be just as easy to go into the switch wires here that go to the record changer. So in that case, I will either mount this on the bottom of the cabinet where the wires come out and this is the back of the amplifier here. This is the front here, of course. And once it's in place, I'll be able to cut into the switch wire here and put this fuse in there. And I could mount it on the bottom of the cabinet below the record changer, or I could mount it on the bottom of the record changer itself. Um, it would mean that if this amplifier has to be taken out, it'd have to remove one screw where this is fastened to the bottom of the cabinet in order to get the amplifier out for service, but not a big deal. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm just getting this place warmed up. I've got the small heater on the bench because everything's cold here today. I just put another bottle of propane on the uh, Mr. Heater. And um, I'm about ready to start work on this. And this particular video is um, not gonna be uploaded until after Christmas here. So I figured I'd, I had some time. I'm coming out here and um, gonna be finishing up. So on this video here, you'll be seeing uh, everything put back together. And uh, I'll be, I'll install this fuse holder and I'll also be lubricating the record changer. I gotta remove the clip out of this because this isn't going to slide in. Hey, this is what I've been trying to say when people say that, you know, you can put stuff up here, you can't. You know, this has to come out. Um, even though that's a low profile, it's only sticking up about a half inch, but there's no clearance to get up underneath this board here for the record changer platform here. You see where these wires are here? These are hinge pins. So I got these wires and they keep coming off the clip inside here. And I gotta connect these wires and there's one that's off down here and um, it looks like they're out of phase, but I'm gonna go by the schematic. Uh, the schematic diagram tells you what color wire goes where, and what it does is it goes onto this terminal here, but I can't do any connection until I slide this into place. And you see there's an aluminum, like an, a heavy aluminum foil glued down to the bottom. It's a shield, and um, that's fastened and it's grounded when this chassis is down on here, and then there's uh, four screws that come up to these clips here. So that's why, if you notice, everything is flush inside the chassis, nothing sticking out, but I got no room to put a fuse holder here other than on the back apron. But I decided I'm not gonna do it that way uh, that's why I'm going to put the amplifier in, and I'm going to cut on the gray and the black wire are the switch wires. The gray and the black. These two here are the changer switch wires. So what happens is 
this is turned on with the record changer switch. The amplifier is turned on, the turntable motor is turned on all with that switch. So I can break this line and put that inline fuse holder down on the deck here or on the bottom of the record changer. I haven't decided which way I'm going to go yet, but we're going to get this amplifier in, and then i got to study the schematic and see which uh, way these wires go. I'm going to wire it the way it says in the schematic. Uh, what i got to do is, first of all, get my reading glasses on here, and uh, I'm going to risk getting my big, ugly head in the way, but I can't help it. i got to find out the secret to uh, what uh, some of the... YouTube channels are able to work on stuff and they get right in there but their heads are not in the camera view. I, I haven't figured out how they do it. It sounds dumb maybe but you know. Now there's little clips here. There's little plastic things which uh, I'm going to get my little screwdriver here and lift it out of there, and I don't want to lose it. I've already lost the one in the middle. And they have to come out. They're only a little, little plastic thing. It looks almost like one of those snaps that you have on a snap coat or something. I'm not sure if they're plastic or metal. I lost one on the bench here somewhere. I'll put it up here by the oscilloscope on won't be in the way. I got to get this out of the way here, this material here, um, so I can slide it up underneath the thing, and then once it's in here, then I can put them back. On the schematic and the pictorial diagram, I should say, these are exposed. These potentiometers are exposed here, the tone and the, and the left and right volume control. Uh, it doesn't show this, but this is obviously original to the equipment. This is not easy. See what I mean about that? There's virtually no space here at all. There's like an eighth inch clearance. See this piece of metal right here on the top of the, uh, that sticks out, that's part of the chassis? See that? Uh, there's less than an eighth inch clearance between that and the bottom of this record changer board, plywood here. So I might have to remove this whole thing completely. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. I think I had it all out. So I put a piece of electrical tape just to hold it down in the middle. And like I say, all it is is a shield, but it would be better if I had the little push button clip that goes in there, the little button or whatever. But anyways, now that it's in, I can uh, get the thing over. But before I do that, I gotta connect up the, uh, the right channel hinge wire and I'm going to look that up on the schematic here. Okay, they had the wires reversed. They had the red on the bottom and the black on the top and uh, the schematic calls for 
both the left and the left and the right to be the black is going to be on the bottom. So I knew it was out of phase, and then these I guess go up here. But I got to look at the uh, schematic and see how they how they uh, wired that. And I have to put the rest of the wires on this terminal strip. So I'm going to leave the amplifier loose like this, so I can pull it over and get my wires onto that end there. And uh, on these crimpers, on the other end of these wires that go to the hinge pin, I had to squeeze them again a, a little bit with the needle nose because they wouldn't stay on tight and they just fell off. So you have to be very gentle when you squeeze these in. You don't pinch them too much and then it won't go on the uh, terminal at all. So I'm going to be working on that side. i got to find a black wire that goes... Over there, I seem to be missing it, but it's got to be around here somewhere because it was here. Uh, and here it is right here. Okay. Okay, so all the wires are accounted for. So this has got to go on the bottom of the left channel hinge. Because as I said, this particular record player, when the speakers are attached to the cabinet, the wing speakers get their power through the hinge pins right here and when you pull them out to separate the speakers then you've got a wire here that should pull out of your speakers and connect it so you have you can use them both ways all right well, I already plugged this in. We'll plug it in again. I got the speakers all phased up. It's a little confusing with this schematic here because it shows a terminal strip here and it shows a terminal strip here. I can't find a second terminal strip. So I managed to figure it out. But there's only one terminal strip and that's on the amplifier itself. And then there's another a uh, four lugger on a, a six by nine speaker that's built in here. So I got all those connected, but I was looking all over for this connector and it doesn't seem to be one. I don't know. I guess that's just the way they drew it. So it really was quite confusing. And uh, the hinge pins are connected up, both left and right. Went by the wiring diagram. And see, you only got one set of terminals here and those are accounted for. But on the schematic, it shows two sets of contacts. It shows uh, the ones, the one on the chassis, but then it shows this one. And there is no second terminal strip. There's only one. So this looks more like the one I, that's on the amp right here. There isn't a second one. The only other one is the four pins here. Uh, the two grays connect together and the two reds connect together. And there's your phasing dot right there, which shows on the schematic. Here is the switch for turning on the changer as well as the changer motor and the amplifier. Here's the inputs, of course, for the uh, phono. So the uh, gray and black wire that you see right dead ahead of you there is where I can put in the fuse holder mounted on the bottom of the uh, record changer. All right, I'm back from lunch. And um, you can't get 99% isopropyl alcohol. I just cannot find it anywhere. This is 91%. This is the best I can do, but that's what I'm going to be using because um, they use this for cleaning printer circuit boards and stuff. I, a lot of YouTube uh, repairers, for some reason, use the 99%, but uh, I went all over, and you, the pharmacies only have the 91%. Good enough, because the one I got in the house is only 50%. So what I, I got some dried-on grease here. It doesn't even come off of my fingers. So I'm going to... Um, Clean it off with a Q-tip and, and uh, the alcohol, 
And then I'm going to use some lubriplate very carefully in these areas here. All right, here's uh, some lubriplate that I've had for many, many, many years. It's white grease. And I'm going to take and put some in this uh, little container here. So I'll have it from my shop. This is the uh, lubriplate. I can't find the little tube of it that I had. I looked all over, like everything else, I'm always losing things. But anyways, I had this stuff for many years. It's what they call white grease, and that's what we use in these things. And uh, I put um, some in this little um, diabetic testing strip uh, container so I can use it in my shop. So we're going to keep that closed and we'll just work out of the can for today. And uh, first of all, I got to clean this record changer with a Q-tip, a rag, and some 91% isopropyl alcohol. Get my reading glasses on here. And uh, first thing we're going to do, we can get some of this grease out of here. And, uh, let's see, we're not going to go crazy with it, but we are going to uh, get some of it out. Matter of fact, let's go put a little on the, on the rag here. Be better, I think. And down in here, where it's uh, dried up, all black, and not really doing anything. Actually, the record changer is in pretty nice shape here. I was never much with record changers. Um, I never really did very much. I did work on them, but I'm no expert on the mechanisms and stuff like that. I mainly like to do the electronics and usually left the uh, mechanical stuff to someone else. I'm going to fill my uh, pin oiler here with this. I'm going to fill that. Hang on a minute. I got her about half full here. And um, put some in here. Because I can't tell if it's coming out or not. oil is coming out of the end of the uh, the needle yeah it's coming out of the end of the needle I tell you, I'm, I think I'm gonna go with the uh, I'm gonna save this for the motor bearings and uh, we'll put it in with with this here and I can be sure it goes in
Alright. Okay. Alright, so... Now... I'm not sure what exactly is going to need oiling. Very hard for me to... Can't tell if that oil's coming out or not. this uh, put it on top of my digital meter here I'm gonna lose it just make sure that okay that's all the way over it's on the speaker so it's not exactly a good place to have it all right now we're going to use alcohol in here to clean the, the inside of the the rim of the turntable but first of all I'm gonna move this out of the way here and uh, we're gonna clean the idler wheel which is right down here all right so we're going to use some isopropyl alcohol on that. Let's see. Did I get oil on the motor shaft? I mean on the pulley? No, I didn't, but I'm going to clean it with alcohol anyways. Like I say, I'm not going to try to remove this uh, pulley. i got enough oil in there, I think. It's very hard to tell if this oil's coming out of this. Yeah, it is. It is. Okay. Let's see if I can get down in the underneath. All right. 
we're going to do is we're going to clean that off because I know I got oil on the pulley. So, and I know I got oil up here. I'm going to finish this with um, the isopropyl alcohol after I do all the lubrication. Yeah. No play in the motor bearings that I can feel. Uh, get a little bit in here. I think I get it. Well. <laughs> like this. I couldn't see anything coming out of the pin oiler, so I had to use right out of here. It probably is coming out of the pin oiler, but my rotten eyesight won't let me see it. Now, we know we got that lubricated good, so I don't really need to take this off. I'm not going to risk having that clip fly across the room. I'm just not going to take that chance. I would if I had another clip to pop in there. I've taken them off many times years ago. But when you don't have something to replace it, you're screwed, blued, and tattooed. I'm not sure what order they do that in. Do they screw you first and then tattoo you? I don't know, but I don't want to go through the procedure. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me uh, clean this guy up here um, with some... Isopropyl alcohol on a rag. Might as well do it all. Make sure my fingers are grease free here as I'm spinning the wheel. And years ago, we used to have a uh, rubber cleaner we used to use on these wheels. It's pretty clean. I will finish going over this with a Q-tip. So there won't be any problems with that. Now we'll just make sure we're not getting any oil out of the... Uh, out of the motor here that can get on to uh, onto the uh, idler. Be careful of that tone arm. We don't want to break the needle here. All right, so I feel better with this thing um, upright. Now, She's spinning freely. Now we'll get another Q-tip. And dip it in some alcohol. While I'm waiting for that to evaporate, we'll go put some luber plate on this gear. And I already put a little oil down in the shaft, down at the bottom where it sits. And we'll wipe off the excess here. Alright. Alright. Okay. Alright, so we just clean the inside rim. Which isn't too dirty. And uh, I think we're pretty we're pretty good here. And 
and we're going to give a magnification inspection to make sure that the idler is completely dry before I um, put the platter on and uh, we're going to do that now. Would probably have been better, but this is supposed to be really good for getting into tight places. All right. I think um, I can put the platter on. I think, I think, I think. I had to reach in with a needle nose. All right, now I gotta reach in with a, well, I can probably do it from underneath. Let's move this. Idle over. Okay. She shuts off. So she rejects fine. She's off. Put it on 16. That keeps the uh, tension off of it. All right. Well, the only thing left to do now is to um, get the fuse in there. And over here, the wires go right directly to the switch. So I gotta break one side, probably the gray. Don't really matter. And put the fuse in here. So I'll probably mount the fuse holder in this area here. It's not gonna interfere. There's no mechanisms that is moving, that is gonna be moving around here. So we're gonna set you up on a camera boom here and we'll be working on that. So. The gray wire goes to the switch. One side of this gray wire goes into this wire nut. It comes around and goes to the motor because that turns the motor on and also the amplifier. So what I got to do is just simply put this fuse holder in series with the switch. Simple as that. All right, I'm going to mount it right here. I had to file the tit off. Don't touch me. Because I was hoping I could use one of these holes that the tit would drop into to keep it from doing this business. But none of the holes would line up. So I marked with a black marker right here where I want to put it. So I'm going to put a 440 screw and nut in there, and I'm going to mount it just like that. And I'll cut the gray wire and put a terminal lug on it and put one over here and the other one over here. So this way it's out of the way of the mechanism. I just got to take the turntable off so I can put the, uh, the nut and the bolt on. So I'll do that off camera and we'll come right back afterwards. My battery's getting low on my camera. I've been doing all my videos on, uh, on this without uh, recharging it. So I may have a problem here before this video is done. Okay, what I had to do is to put this black wire under the fuse, but it's not harming anything. The fuse still snaps down. Um, and we're going to break this gray wire. These two wires go to the switch right here. So. I got to 
cut it about here. We got to make sure we're not into the gear here. We got to put a terminal on the end of it, and then we'll put the other end over here, and then we'll pull this back down and out of the way. I got it in, got the connectors in. The wires are in, I'll push this down. And Bob gave me a one amp uh, fast blow, but I would feel better if I had a slow blow in there. I'm not sure the exact current draw of this thing. Um, let me see if I can find a, uh, a slow blow to go in there. I think one amp is sufficient because you gotta allow for the tubes, you know, also, not just the B plus. Um, I was never any good at repairing record changers, never. And other than oiling and cleaning the idler wheels, I was never, never any good at it. And it's gonna show in this, cause this thing here is not bouncing on the springs right. And I got the, uh, when you turn these two screws, you may not be able to see this from here. You know, it's just not on the springs right, you know. But I got them lined up best I can, and it's not the fuse. I took these springs and I turned them, when you turn these down, all right, let's just see if it works. the record he gave me. Alright, we can't leave that sound on too long. I, I don't have the wing speakers. All it's doing is playing through the 6x9 here that's in here. But, um, let's see. We'll come to the end of the record. It should shut off. Nope. It did not shut off. I say I don't know I don't know very much about record changes. I used to leave them to a guy I knew. That's going to shut off now. Okay, but it didn't. The power didn't go off. Hey, out of my field. I'm no good at record changes other than what you saw on this video with me lubricating and cleaning the idler wheel. Okay, um, I ran it and it did shut off. I just guess it just needs to be run in. It's not really cold in this shed right now, but we got a day of about mid 50s outside. So probably uh, just needed to be worked in with the lube and everything that I put in there. So it seems to be working. The only problem I've got is this changer is just about sitting on the base. Even though I got these screws turned all the way in, which gives you the most spring action, because when you turn them out, it tightens it down to the base. So, I don't know why. It's lined up right. You can see where there's an even space right here and even space here, so I got it in there right. And it's supposed to be shifted over here because uh, that's the opening. Yeah, that's the springs. But I don't know. I don't like the way that turntable sits, and I'm going to let uh, Bob take care of that. I took care of the electronics. I'll let him take care of the mechanical of it. Thank you very much for watching. You have a good day, good night, good evening, good morning, whatever the case might be. This is the half-ass blind tinkerer, half-ass technician. Thank you for watching.